So today I have a pretty cool unboxing of something that at the time of unboxing it is not released, but by the time I release the video it will be released. So this is the Intel Thermal Solution RTS 2011 LC for TDP up to 130 watt. Yes, that is Intel's awesome and like cool marketing name. And by marketing name, I mean, I mean part number, for their new liquid cooler for their LG8 2011 processors. And it's not only for their LG8 2011 processors. Actually, they outline on the front of the box, here, check this out, that it is good for 2011, 1366, 11, 1156, and 1155. Now, one difference between this and competing liquid cooling solutions, such as those from Corsair or Coolit or... Uh, Antec or whoever the case may be is that this one does not come with any AMD mounting hardware. I know, right? Very unexpected. So, we've actually got a trial cameraman with us here today. I just thought I'd let you guys know that. And uh, I saw on one of the other videos I uploaded, you guys are already making comments on what you think of the various camera people we're trying out. So I'd be happy to hear your comments and I'm sure he'll be either happy or or disappoint to hear your comments and apparently there's a CPU in here although I really really don't think they're all gonna come with a CPU so yeah let's look at the uh, documentation that's included first we've got the Intel RTS 2011 LC liquid cooling solution which includes installation instructions and a three-year warranty that's awesome actually that's outstanding having a three-year warranty on a cooler like this important do not fully tighten Okay, until they're all partially engaged, that's good. These are all good instructions. Here's a little diagram showing you what to do and what goes where and how to mount on AMD. Oh, no, not on AMD. No, no, no this only mounts on Intel sockets. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so there you go. These are actually fairly detailed. Plug the thing in the thing, and you're done. Okay, uh, let's look at the included mounting accessories and whatnot. I like the environmentally friendly packaging here, so that's all recyclable material. So, this is actually different. This looks like the probably OEM'd by Asetech based on... Oh, yeah, there, there's an Asetech logo right there on the back of the back plate. So you can see it's got the 1156, 1366, and 775 mounting here. And then it looks like the way... Okay, here's the retention ring. All right. And then what else have we got here? Okay, we've got some thumb screws. Nice big thumb screws. So you have the option of either screwing them in with your fingers or screwing them in with a Phillips head screwdriver. Got some other more different ones. All right, we've got what look like aluminum spacers. Okay, we've got some double-sided uh, sticky pads, which are going to prevent your motherboard from being shorted out by applying the back plate. All right, we've got some screws. So these are your fan mounting screws as well as your radiator mounting screws. I'll show you how those work in a minute. We've got some Intel approved thermal compound, which comes in a little baggie. And we have some zip ties. Look at that, Intel includes zip ties for you. Actually, two things of thermal compound, very nice. All right, let's have a look at the unit itself. The first thing I wanna check out is the fan because my expectations for this fan, based on how cool it looks, are pretty high. This is actually a blue fan. And you know what, let's pause the video for a minute and let's go check out the color. So there you go, that's what the fan looks like when it's on. It's pretty cool, or as my little brother would say, super cool. Okay, so it's got three LEDs, which are all on the central hub, not on the frame like we're used to seeing on fans. Okay, it's not incredibly loud by any stretch of the imagination, but I think that it's running at 100% right now because that header is not speed controlled. So we'll go back and we'll have a look at the unit itself. So one of the first things I notice about this particular guy right here is that it looks pretty similar to the Antec 920 in that it has uh, this awesome, awesome tubing. So look at this. I can take this tubing, I can twist it up, and I could mount my CPU here. And I could mount my tubing like that, and it would not kink. This is nice, thick wall, flexible tubing, and you should not underestimate the importance of that when you're doing a liquid cooling setup. Tubing is imperative to the overall performance because if it kinks, performance will suck. And if it doesn't kink, performance will be good. It is the difference between suck and good. So very, very nice, 
very well thought out and it's expensive too, bear that in mind. Tubing is very expensive, so putting in a high quality tubing is something where Intel is saying, okay, we're gonna spend extra money on this unit to make sure that it performs well in any given scenario. Another thing I noticed right away is that it uses a thicker style radiator. This is another thing that I cannot stress the importance of enough. Liquid cooling is not a magic bullet. It comes down to the same basic principles of moving air, and surface area. The only reason liquid coolers perform better than air coolers is that we're able to take that surface area, move it very efficiently away from the CPU, and then disperse it somewhere else on something that is bigger and has more surface area than a typical heat sink that you can put directly on a CPU socket. So using that thicker style radiator versus the kind that is used on something like an H50 is definitely a good move for Intel. Last but not least, we've got the pump and CPU block combo unit. So you can see here that there are actually, oh, neat, okay. So there's actually a power lead here. So that's gonna plug into your four pin PWM CPU header. And then there is an additional power lead and that is a, I can't remember whether it's male or female, but the point is that it plugs into the fan. There you go. So that one runs the fan. So that means that all of the logic for controlling pump speeds as well as fan speeds is all based on the unit itself here. We've got a copper base, which is pretty much par for the course. If it's using anything but copper, it's going to see slightly degraded performance. All right, and I think that pretty much covers everything. Oh, you know what? That looks like it lights up. Let's go back to that test bench and find out if it does. So this is a lights on simulation of what the unit will look like. There we've got the fan installed on the radiator as well as the CPU block unit installed on the CPU. So you can see both the Intel logo and the cooled by Asetek parts of the top actually light up blue, which looks really cool. And now let's do a lights off shot of this. And here is our lights off look at the unit. Very, very cool looking. Definitely one of the best looking liquid coolers that I have seen to date for these pre-done, pre-filled units.